cost them billions to make their te technology compatible with the new notes and coins. Some companies that use coin-operated machines will have the extra headache of having to change them overnight. The Glasgow Underground takes the fares of 14 million passengers a year. Changing all its machines to use euros will cost a million pounds. But its managers still don't know when or whether to spend the money. It's very difficult for us because until we know if and when this is going to happen, then effectively it means that we can't make any decisions about changing our ticket machines or introducing new ticket machines onto the system. The bill for changing tills and computer systems, cash points and vending machines across the country could easily add up to tens of billions of pounds. The government wants businesses to start spending some of that money soon. But shops opposed to joining the euro, like Dixon's, are reluctant to go ahead. We would rather wait until after the referendum, because then we'll have a clear indication of yes or no. When we've got that indication, we'll invest with confidence or otherwise. What we have to do is to change all our tills, all our point of sale, all our backup system. It is so complicated, it really is quite frightening. Don't give me that bloody new money, because I don't want it. What's wrong with it? At the time of decimalisation, many shoppers were equally wary. That was a huge change when it happened. And the government's probably right in saying the changeover to the euro will be ten times bigger. When in 1971 we stopped using these notes and started using these ones, the new money was at least relatively familiar. A pound was still a pound, a shilling was five new pence and so on. But if and when we start using these notes, then the new money will be completely different. There'll be no more pounds and pence, but euros and cents. So consumer groups say the government must make sure people understand what's going on. You need to have um, dual pricing, you need to have it in a way that consumers understand, and we now need to have detailed discussions with the Treasury as to how the government is going to make sure the public is prepared so we don't get ripped off. Shops fear they may get blamed for that as well. The costs and difficulties seem huge. But today the government's taken another step towards making it possible that one day we'll all be spending euros at the till. Ed Crooks, BBC News. Britain's first war crimes trial has resumed at the Old Bailey, where Anthony Savonyuk is being tried. He's accused of four murders and helping to hunt down Jews during the German occupation of its hometown in Belarus. The only Jewish witness in the trial, Bensian Blustein, told the jury about some of the atrocities that took place during the occupation. Our legal affairs correspondent, John Silverman, was in court. Ben Sion Blustein came to the Old Bailey from Israel, but his testimony took the court back to his youth in Belarus. He described how the Nazi invasion in 1941 created terror. He said Jews were forced to wear yellow patches on their clothing and had to bow before every German they met in the street. Speaking in Hebrew through an interpreter, he told the court that a rabbi and 40 of his congregation were shot by the SS after being forced to drag a heavy cart for many hours. He wiped away a tear at the memory. Mr. Blustein also became distressed when he recounted the fate which befell the town's Jewish barber. He said the man saw his three sons shot in front of him and was ordered to bury them. One of the boys was still alive and cried out, but the father was beaten until he complied with the order. Last week, the jury went to Belarus to see where the alleged crimes were committed. Today they heard that winter conditions in the Jewish ghetto were so bad that if somebody died, people were jealous. The defendant, Antony Savoniuk, was said to have behaved cruelly whenever he wanted. He became a lord over us Jews, said Mr. Blustein, who'd known him since childhood. The court also heard that Savoniuk had worked for the Jews before the war. But, said Ben Sion Blustein, everything changed when the Nazis turned their lives upside down. John Silverman, BBC News, at the Old Bailey. Teaching.